What's going on, Ambitious Vets? Welcome to episode number 39 of the Ambitious Vet Show with Air Force veteran and Savvy Vets founder, Adrian Phillips. Welcome to the Ambitious Vet. My name is Chris Hoffman, Marine Combat Veteran turned passion driven entrepreneur. Now guys, we are here to dive into the trenches with today's top performing military veterans that were once warrior made, but are now passion driven now guys as they share their stories their journeys and what it took to get to where they are we just hope that this unlocks your secret formula to living a more meaningful passion driven and purposeful life out of the uniform All right, Ambitious Vet. So if you're listening to this, guys, I already know that you are probably a part of the Ambitious Vet tribe. And if you're not, go ahead and get in there, guys. We got over 540 Ambitious Vets in the trenches together with one in mission. And that is how do we execute our next mission as soon as possible, utilizing each other's tools, strategies, gifts, talents, you name it. How do we execute that next mission? So guys, what's coming up in the loop? As I said last week, we have the Ambitious Vet Sprint that is set to launch March 13th, guys. Um, we have subject matter experts coming in like Stephen Kuhn, the hitman, who can literally within 30 minutes of a conversation, if a, in a group setting or one-on-one, can help you get unstuck in one business problem right then and there and help you f- identify the one revenue stream that's stopping you from taking your business to the next level. We've got people like Dan Dwyer. Dan Dwyer is a mentor of mine. A lot of you guys that follow me closely know him and know me and know how close we are. And he's founder of Vet to Biz Life. Um, he consults companies like Toyota, Southwest Airlines. The guy is one of the best leadership consultants um, out there in the corporate world. Otis McGregor um, is also coming in. He is the founder of LTO Enterprises. Um, he is, I interviewed him a couple weeks ago live inside the Ambitious Fet Tribe. And I got to tell you guys, I was blown away by his wisdom, his expertise as far as business development and how to really start building relationship from level one to level 10. And we got John Krotek. John Krotek is the man, the myth, the legend as far as strategic partnerships. He's one of the best um, veterans I have ever met as far as building solid and long-lasting quality and lucrative relationships. We've got Dr. Golden, um, who is one of the thought leaders in forwarding the concept in psychology core values coming in. Guys, you're not going to want to miss it. It's a gamifying journey that we go through together, led by me and five other subject matter matter experts that come in with one end goal in mind, is that how do we work as a team to execute your next mission in 90 days, guys? Um, it's well worth over $10,000. We're getting it out the door for as little as $97 if you just want to get a, a standard spot. If you want VIP, it's a little bit higher than that. But guys, I'll let you make that choice. Just go to vettrainingcoaching.com now. Hit the uh, the tab, Ambitious Vet Sprint, and apply now. We're only accepting 25 veterans and it's getting close to deadline deadlines march 11th so if you get this before march 11th of 2019 get to vettrainingcoaching.com and apply now all right ambitious vet first and foremost just want to you know thank you for go ahead and diving into the trenches with us today we don't take it for granted we know you're busy we know you're out there making it happen and, and figuring out new ways to you know execute that next mission faster and more efficiently. So guys, I want to thank you for your time. First and foremost, guys, I'm ready to bring you the golden grenades. Today, we got Adrian Phillips. Adrian is a service-disabled veteran who founded Strategic Alliance for Veteran Integration, aka Savvy. Now, that was created strictly out of a reaction to the immense need for support for veterans transitioning to the civilian life. She served in the Air Force as a combat service member in security forces. Now, guys, as Adrian transitioned out of the military and into civilian life, She realized that veterans often make that transition with little to no structural support or guidance. This prompted her to spend over 11 years working in veteran benefits sector, including working in development, training, presenting, quality assurance, and division management. Now, guys, in 2011, she started her first entrepreneurial um, project. 
She started a corporation focusing on the event travel management and corporate business travel. In 2017, she harnessed all of her experience as a veteran benefits manager and entrepreneur to found Strategic Alliance for Veteran Integration with the goal of supporting every service member's transition. Now, guys, you guys are going to love this one. We dive into what I call Adrian Phillips as the networking queen. She dives into perspective versus resources, which is a big, big topic in today's world. We all know there's there's tons of resources out there, but very, very few veterans know how to take that next step. She talks about the difference between that. She talks about um, her journey of going a year and a half of troubleshooting, trying to find purpose, passion, and uh, a paycheck. Um, Guys, she dives into her secret. Um, I think what a lot of us um, realize is building relationships is important. Social capital, human capital is important. Networking is important. She dives into her few secret strategies on how she builds a solid foundation for exponential growth inside of her relationships. So guys, I'm going to go ahead and shut up. I'm going to go ahead and dive right in with today's guest, Adrian Phillips. Let's get it. How are you? I am. I am. Hey, Chris. Thank you so much for having me on. It's great to be here. Yeah, we're excited to have you on the Ambitious Vet Show. So go ahead and fill the gaps and kind of let us know a little bit about who you are out of just being this, uh, this networking genius that you are. <laughs> well, thank you for that, uh, that introduction, I will say. Um, so, like you mentioned, I did serve in the United States Air Force. I joined the military two weeks out of high school. So, I spent wow. my entire senior year, nice ripe age of 17, in the delayed entry program. If anybody knows that, what that is, it's a, a year long program for uh, individuals that are interested in getting involved in the military. So, I was going to monthly meetings my entire senior year. I actually turned 17. Um, right before I ended up starting the delayed entry program. (laughs) So I was really, really young. And as soon as my parents signed me away, I had a diploma in hand. I was ready to go. So I started out my career as a police officer, security forces in the Air Force, and, uh, you know, had my my tourism deployments overseas, came back and started my transition process about six months prior to getting out. Um, Mm a pretty rough transition despite preparation, which I'm sure we'll get into a little bit later. But I uh, started out with American Veterans, which is a nonprofit organization that started my career in veteran services. And uh, like you said, I've been in veteran services for about 12 years, specializing in VA benefits, federal benefits as a whole, and then launched my company back in 2011, which um, really we focus on supporting the business to business sector. So small businesses, corporations, nonprofits, anybody that's hosting an event, we come in and we help them with the travel logistics around that. Wow. Wow. You do a lot. (laughs) Just a little little bit keeps me busy. I love it. I love it. And I love how you said that you started the transition six months prior to getting out of the uniform. I think... Us, uh, you know, being me being a former Marine, I didn't plan until like the last week because they expect us to be like a Marine up until we're literally out of the uniform. So that's that's right. pretty that's pretty awesome stuff. Um, but I just want to give some shout outs. We got Trish Leto. Um, she's like the Facebook Live Queen B that's live with us. <laughs> she's awesome. She's, she's awesome. She's like Adrian is a badass. <laughs> well, thank you she is as well she is an amazing amazing individual so shout outs to her yeah i just had a conversation with her like i believe yesterday the day prior she's up to really big things so any any of you guys that are inside this tribe and want to get to know how to monetize facebook lives trish leto is the the gal to talk to um we got andy nelson live with us he's the trademark king for veterans literally hey, andy. You guys are- yeah. yeah. I've worked with both of them. So shout out to them. Come on, man. They're following you. They want to get they want to get these golden grenades from you, girl. <laughs> All right. So let's um you briefly told us about your transition story, but kind of walk us through. You said it was kind of a tough transition. So right. the, the day after you got out of the uniform, tell us about tell us about that day and kind of how you started creating some traction out of the uniform. Well, I can tell you. Um, talk about reality setting in, you know, I, I attended TAPS class and um, don't get me wrong, TAPS is great, great information, great resume writing skills, interview skills, um, but the transition process certainly wasn't like the brochure. I had the right resume, I had the right suit on, and nobody was calling me. 
Um, you know, being a police officer in service, I had no idea how to translate that into something other than being a police officer. And I had no desire to be in law enforcement anymore. And so it was kind of like, a, well, what do I do now? I thought that this was gonna be easier than what it actually was. I have this great resume, but nobody is calling me. And I had started applying for federal jobs. And um, if anybody has gone through that process, you know that it takes forever and a day. So it was probably about a year and a half of just radio silence before I ever heard anything back from the federal side of the house. So first day, it's like, all right, I'm a veteran now. Now what? You know, you're kind of waiting for like the parade to come through, the lights and the, the bells and the whistles. And it's just kind of quiet. And it's a little bit scary because you don't know what that next step is. I know I didn't. And so despite having the preparation, I was totally unsure about what like what the next appropriate action would be, especially considering that I didn't have a job, I wasn't getting that many phone calls back, and I really had no idea where my next paycheck was going to come from. So that was really super scary, and um, it took me a while. I mean, I, it definitely took me a while to get back into the swing of things and finally get a job. So I spent about six months um, unemployed doing babysitting jobs, commission-based jobs, and um, I was at a high financial risk on the brink of potentially losing my home and not knowing exactly where I was going to be able to get money to survive off of. And so it was a really scary time for me. Mm, yeah, I can imagine. Yeah, yeah, it sounds like you were just taking the opportunities that were coming to you. Right. Right. Wow. wow. Awesome. Wow. Um, so, yeah. So tell us, like, out of all this, these experiences you were going through, all these kind of failures, these rejections, all this, the, you know, hurry up and wait is kind of language we, we learn in the military. Um, kind of like what led up to you kind of finding like, okay, this is what I'm going to go with. Like, this is my purpose. This is my passion. This is what I'm rocking. With. I will tell you, I was lucky that the job kind of found me. So my first job um, out of the military, I'll say a, an actual paying job was um, working with American veterans, as I mentioned, a nonprofit. So my service rep was actually leaving his position and he actually let me know like, Hey, I know you're looking for employment. This might be an opportunity for you to apply for something. And so in my mind at the time, it was just like, oh, this is a job. I mean, great. Like, let me go for it. And then I quickly realized that I was going to be working with veterans. And I'm like, this is awesome. I get to actually make a difference and help. And so um, as soon as I really understood the nature of the position, which was to advocate for veterans filing for their VA disability, I was super excited to do it. And that really created an entire career field for me that I had no idea even existed and had no idea that I could ever get into or be good at. And so um, it was brand new territory for me. I had no idea about the VA claims process. I was going through it myself. And certainly, you know, I was like, well, maybe I can use that information to not only help other veterans, but to hopefully help get, bring some clarity to my process too. So I was super excited to learn a lot about it. And it took me, it took me some time <laughs> to definitely get a handle on it. But uh, it has been one of the most rewarding decisions that I've ever made. And, and like I said, it, it really did happen to find me. So had I not been open to the potential and the opportunity, I never would have even thought of this as a viable marketplace to, to really get into. Wow. That's awesome. And I'm happy. I mean, just what you've been able to do for the 11 years of helping veterans. I mean, I guarantee you helped hundreds, if not thousands of veterans do their stuff. And I think I'm speaking for the whole military community when we speak like, holy shit, when can we speed up that whole process? Right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my right. God. Listen, you come, you come to us through Savvy and we'll tell you how. I mean, that's really our goal is, is to make sure that we are providing that educational piece. And like I said, I'm sure we'll get into that a little bit more, but it was, I mean, you couldn't have ever told me back then, like this would be kind of the result of taking that first initial step and getting into that marketplace because there's so much to be learned. And I was completely clueless and it makes sense to me why so many other veterans going through transition are clueless because this stuff is confusing. It's not easy. It is yeah. very, it's a lot of information first and foremost. But secondly, um, it's not exactly like clear cut, like, all right, here, let's just, you know, outline it for you in a way that's going to make sense. And you have all the clarity in the world. It's a lot of self-discovery that you have to go through. Yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. So speaking of self-discovery, like 
how did this opportunity start creating like structure in your life? How did you start creating traction? Because one of the biggest things I've learned through interviewing a lot of top performing um, ambitious vets like yourself and even coaching a hell of a lot of veterans myself um, in and out of personal development and stuff like that is like the hardest thing is just gaining traction out of the uniform. So when you were when you were in that, what what, what were the tendencies? How did you know that that's where you were going to spend the the rest of you know 11 years of your life but also how did you how did you start gaining that traction well um i you know for me it was a very unique opportunity of being able to help veterans so i did two things i satisfied my need for getting a paycheck but i also satisfied my need for finding purpose and at that time i certainly didn't know that that would be an important part of my transition you know being able to serve your country and be in the uniform, it does come with this enormous sense of pride. It comes with an enormous sense of accomplishment, knowing that you are doing something that 99% of the population is not doing. Mm -hmm. And you get the honor to serve and give back every single day. And so being able to not in the same context, but still be able to not only be uh, connected to my fellow veterans, but to be able to give back and have an impact it really meant the entire world to me. And the minute that I realized that that impact was important was when the workload and the long hours didn't even matter to me anymore because I knew that I was doing the good work. All it took was that one bet that said, hey, you have made the difference in my life. Now I'm able to pay my bills. I'm able to keep the lights on. Now I'm able to get access to healthcare. My family's able to get access to things that they need. That, you know, those stories right there is what gave me all the fuel that I needed to just keep pushing on. And it was so frustrating, um, just kind of learning about the lack of education that existed within our veteran community and how many people were struggling. I always say it was a 10 year problem with a 10 minute solution. Our guys were sitting here fighting for these things for years and years and years and years, just saying, you know, why is this getting denied? Or why am I getting 15 different answers to one question? And literally the solution was, was this big, right? It was, it was 10 minutes of, let me just direct you to the right form, the right language, the right website, the right organization. And that, that's all that it took was that 10 minute focus concentration to say, this is how this is relevant to you and here's how we're gonna make a difference. So that's really what propelled me forward and continues to propel me forward every single day is knowing that um, the work that we're doing is, is making an impact and it's making an impact in a really big way. I mean, not having the right benefits, not having the right support, not having the right information about these things are literally costing people their lives, their mm -hmm. livelihood, their families. I mean, I can go on. These are some very serious problems that we're facing. So. Um, how could you not feel good when you're able to, to make, be a part of that solution and give back? No, absolutely. Um, and I love what you're doing at Savvy. And um, I know I had a conversation with you a couple months ago. And the, one of the things I actually literally wrote down on a piece of paper after our conversation, I know you're an emailer. I'm more <laughs> of a, a white piece of paper, kind of a, a note taker. Right. But one thing I wrote down is um, so many organizations fire hose veterans with information. And one of the right. most powerful things that you said in our conversation is that it's not the lack of resources that everyone complains about with the veteran community. It's actually right. a lack of perspective. Right. So can you touch more on that and the need that you saw when starting Savvy? Right. So, um, you know, like you mentioned, that the access is certainly not the problem. We have about 600,000 different resources between federal, state, and local level. There is an abundance of things that are out there but customization and relevancy are really lacking in the marketplace. Mm -hmm. So um, I, you know, going through this process again, you know, Savvy is a new organization, but certainly I am not new to the veteran services field. So I've heard it all, you know, um, they're just waiting for me to die. You know, nobody knows what they're talking about. Um, I'm going to sit here and, you know, try to do X, Y, and Z, but what's the point if it's not going to make a difference, all of these things. But again, it's, it's so we talk about perspective. It's like, you have to know how these things are relevant in order for you to even care enough to pay attention. Mm -hmm. So when we're going through transition, there's so many different priorities and objectives that are constantly changing. And so our goal as an organization is to A, fundamentally provide the education about what those benefits are. What are the federal entitlements that you as a veteran are eligible for? Once that comes back, what additional programs and benefits can you tap into? 
So once you're trying to get out, whether you're going to be pursuing education, whether you're looking for a job, you're starting a business, or you're pursuing the retirement route, there are specific programs, resources, and tools that are in place to help you. So we need to take those things based on what your priorities are and make them relevant to you. So actually understanding, A, what is the actual benefit? How is this going to help me achieve whatever it is that I'm looking to, especially in business? Now, being professionally trained in benefits, when I started my first company, I had no clue what my benefits were as a business owner. No clue. I can't tell you how many hours and how much money I just threw into the wind, hoping something was going to stick because I had no idea what was out there to help support me. And so, again, perspective, right? Once I had an understanding of these things, and again, having the knowledge that I do, it still took me... 18 different websites, you know, 35 different clicks, um, reading through, I don't know how many different countless articles and programmatic, you know, um, outlines and things just to figure out, okay, this is what this benefit is for. Can I apply that to my business? Can I apply that to my circumstances? If so, what is the eligibility? Now I have to look at, do I actually qualify for this? You know, what is the process? What is the timeline in which I need to wait to get these things? You know, who do I need to talk to to take next steps? Is yeah. there certain paperwork that I need to have filed? All of these things are adding to, again, what is the need and how can we ultimately make sure that we're prepared to go along that journey to get that need satisfied by whatever means or channels and programs and resources that are available to us. So um, there's a lot of different components that need to be analyzed before you take those next steps, but all of these things are there to make our life easier. And if we just take a little bit of that effort and tap into these things, trust me, hours, money, all of the headaches can be absolutely saved and you can be a lot more impactful with the work that you're doing by just having access to these things. Yeah. No, that's awesome. Hey, Ambitious Vet. So we'll be right back into the trenches with Adrian Phillips right after we're thanking today's sponsor, guys. One thing I noticed 10 to 12 episodes before this one is I was promoting Audible and sending you guys to a website, which I saw over 80 people per episode were clicking on, but there was no clear call to action to actually join Audible. So long story short, I reached out to John Lee Dumas from EO Fire Guys, and that guy is amazing. If you guys haven't heard his podcast, an amazing podcast, one of the top, you know, top podcasts, um, started by an army veteran. Um, And he, without hesitation, hooked it up and helped us here at the Ambitious Vet have Audible become an official sponsor, guys. So we're humbled, and we're able to actually offer you a 30-day trial guys so today's episode is brought to you by audible audible is offering all of our listeners a free audiobook with a 30-day free trial membership just go to audibletrial.com forward slash ambitious vet and browse guys the unmatched selection of audio programs download a title free start listening it's really that easy go to audible.com slash ambitious vet and get started today guys why audible audible content includes an unmatched selection of audiobooks original audio shows news comedy and more from the leading audiobook publishers broadcasters and entertainers guys i love audible guys i use this every day on my commute to the gym back to the gym back to the gym later when i'm pissed off or whatever it may be right as a daily challenge as an ambitious vet guys but you'll never ever um you know, not realize the potential and the value of those those gray areas in your life. And utilizing audiobook will narrow the time frames from from titles like Think and Grow Rich, The Magic of Thinking Big. I'm reading The Three Laws of Success with Deepak Chopra right now, guys. So long story short, go download your free audiobook today. Go to audio audiotrial.com forward slash ambitious vet. And again, that's audio audiotrial.com forward slash ambitious vet for your free audiobook. Go download it now. So do you think it's more important for an ambitious vet to be resourceful or have resources and why? Uh, be resourceful because <laughs> being a veteran in general, that the having resources should already be checkmarked. That shouldn't even be a consideration. If you are a veteran, believe me, you have resources available. 
And some people will say, well, maybe I didn't get an honorable discharge, or maybe I didn't uh, serve in a wartime period, or I'm not severely wounded. I don't have any loss of limbs. It doesn't matter. The fact that you served in and within itself already makes you eligible for countless programs, benefits, tools, and resources. You just have to find what's relevant to your situation and what eligibility you can ultimately apply to some of these different programs. So again, being a veteran, you already, you already have resources. So the next thing is to do is be resourceful. You have to think outside of the box. Mm. And the second thing is that you have to ask. As veterans, we don't ask for help. That's just the reality. You know, we don't want to be seen as weak. We don't want to be seen as struggling, whatever it is. So we never ask these things. It's okay. You know, ask your fellow comrades, ask your fellow vets. You know, that's what we're here for. Groups like the one that you have, as well as many other groups, that's what they're there for. They're there to help facilitate these connections. You know, if nothing else, call us. Call us at Savvy. That's what we're here for. We're help, yeah. here to help add clarity to this process because it is confusing and it's so much information. So we are here to take the time to make sure that we are going through analyzing what your objectives and priorities are and then making these things relevant. And it's not a one-time call. That's the other thing about this. You know, TAPS, as well as some of these other transition programs, they're very limited in terms of time frame. It's either three days or five days or maybe a week. I, I can tell you that being a veteran myself, as I'm sure you can attest to, you can't go from veteran to civilian in a matter of three or five days. I, I, I mean, basic training is longer than that. Yeah. The tech school is longer than that. So we should be taking the same level of investment to prepare to get out as we are to go in. And um, so that's why our program is 12 months long, so that we are assessing throughout the journey what the needs are and how we can make connections for you. 100%. I love how much it's custom made. Right. Everything you know I mean? is custom, absolutely. Yeah. It's, uh, I remember TAPS, all these other nonprofit organizations that I, I've known besides Savvy have, is not custom made to the needs of what any, you know, um, you know, a veteran that's wanting to get out of the uniform is trying to do. Um, and the problem is, is the veteran don't know what they want to do. So they teach resumes, stuff like that, writing, which is great. But if you don't even know why you're writing the resume, what's the point? Like, I love how you guys dive into the why, which is, the key to getting into motives, motivation and drive and, and all that, that inspires the strategic leadership and all that, that us as military veterans, we're very good at, we're high executors, but we just got to have a mission and you guys are very good at that. Now, I do want to mention this because one thing that I think everyone that's tuning in here live, um, Eric Mitchell, welcome brother, Life Flip Media in the house, guy is a genius for getting veterans on the news, man. This guy is a former Marine slash stud. I think his profile picture on Facebook is him in a fake Santa beard. Guy, <laughs> but he's brilliant. He's brilliant. I love him. We're all brother. Um, Bing Kaloy, thanks for joining us live. But see, I think why a lot of people are joining us live is one thing that you're known for is networking and building really solid um, and deep strategic partnerships very quickly. So kind of you know, one thing I admire about Savvy is your guys' reach is far and your relationships are solid. So kind of walk us through that process around your guys' reach and how you guys have gone about, you know, creating all this, this, these partnerships and what this makes available for ambitious vets. Well, the, the first thing um, that I would say to the key to any successful relationship is really understanding how you can add value. That's how we lead in our conversations is how can we add value to your process, to your life, to what you're doing? Because again, we are here to help support, you know? And I am certainly of the belief that our service does not end when the uniform comes off. So this is an extension of that. You know, we are all veterans. We are all here to, to be, um, you know, our, our wing men and wing women, if you will, and really carry that battle buddy mentality forward. Because we didn't do it alone when we were in service, so why should we have to do it alone when we get out? So how do you add value? And that's really been, honestly, probably one of the, the key to my successes when it comes to networking is that I'm always looking for ways to add value. And I'm never looking at it as a one-time conversation. I'm interested in long-term relationships because even if we don't have a direct connection today, if there's not something that you can do for me or I can do for you at this very moment, you just never know what's going to come up in the future. 
And I'm always looking for ways to connect individuals, again, to add that value to their processes, because sometimes that's all they need is that one phone call, that one connection, that one individual that can really help take their project, their objective, their organization, their business, whatever it is forward, and really help make an impact. And believe me, a win for any veteran is a win for us all. And that's really my belief is really bringing us together as a collective community to really help one another because together we can go further by yourself. You can definitely go faster, but together we can go further. And I think that that's really what it's about is the collective mission as veterans to really help bring one another forward and continue to empower each other to make a difference. Yeah, no, I love that. I love your mission. And I can honestly say, guys, anytime that I've been on a call, and for those of you guys that are live with us, I mean, I'm sure that you guys could definitely relate to this with Adrian is like, she's always coming from a place of how can I help you this, I can connect you with probably two or three people. I don't want to overwhelm you. But I'm probably going to connect you with like probably four people this week that's going to narrow your time frame and you getting your next mission done. So she's always leading with value, always looking to get your next mission done. And uh, yeah, I mean, about this strategic partnerships within Savvy, kind of how have you gone about building these strategic partnerships and uh, how can it like help any veteran that wants to come in and uh, know more about Savvy? Well, it's really important to dive into um, not only what the objectives are of an individual, but like you said, the why aspect of it. Why do we do what we do? And having the opportunity to brainstorm collectively really helps add leverage for all parties that are involved. You know, a lot of times we tend to kind of quantify contribution by just a money exchange. Like, what can I do for you? It normally equates to some kind of money. Either you're going to buy something from me or as a nonprofit, you're going to donate to our cause and that's it. For me, I am definitely the belief that human capital far exceeds, ex exceeds any dollar sign contribution that anybody can make because then they're not only invested into what you're doing as an organization, but into you as an individual. And that's really important when you're looking to create leverage is, okay, what are your fundamental values? Why is it that you do the work that you do on a day-to-day -day basis? And how can we tap into that main key motivator that are your values to figure out how we can collaborate on things together. Mm -hmm. Collaboration, leverage, partnerships are all about having mutually beneficial exchanges all the time. If it's not mutually beneficial, then there is no such thing as a partnership. That is what you're there to do, is to bring your efforts together to make something beautiful happen. And so it's really diving into how can we align our values to make a difference? Mm -hmm. That is the kind of fundamental question that drives all of my conversations. And even when I'm looking to add value, it's like, okay, the reason that I'm going to add this value is because I understand why you're doing what you're doing. And I want to be a part of that. I want to help mm -hmm. take that forward. And believe me, when I say by you adding that value to somebody else, people are naturally going to want to do the same in return. And so that's how you create beautiful partnerships across the board and get people involved in a long-term perspective to really help you build and you can help them build so that you're equally benefiting from this relationship and you can really have something to look forward to from a long-term perspective. Mm. Wow. You're so well-spoken. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so it's just like, um, and it's all hard driven. That's what I love about you. And it's, um, you know, I mean, I think that there's a lot to say about that, but I mean, what I really love about what you're saying is that, you know, when you got solid roots, as far as relationships, no matter if you fail in business, which I have a lot, um, failed in careers, which I have a lot, a lot of people in this tribe have, um, when you got strong relationships, there's always new opportunity there, right? right? And there, if there are solid relationships that you've provided consistent value in, then, you know, that's saying something. I mean, like you said, it's a, it's a, there's an end result always tied when you find people that value the same things that you value. So I think, I think you're blowing this interview up. The roof is off. The well, roof is you. off. I appreciate that. You know, one um, thing that I heard uh, quite some time ago that's always stuck with me is that people won't forget or won't remember what you say, but they will always remember how you made them feel. Mm. And I, I, I certainly see that every single day and, and the impact that I make and things always come full circle. You know, you may do a good deed, put it out there and nothing happens for a week, a month, even a year sometimes. But believe me when I tell you, you are constantly sowing, you know, good seeds of all of this wonderful value that you're putting out there into the world. It will come back to you tenfold sometimes. And not that that should be the reason why you do things, 
but just understand that there is a very kind of real karma that you are creating by doing good for people without the expectation of everything in return. Mm, I think that's huge. I don't think people really understood what you said as far as going into conversation without expectations, like your agenda, front, front, front standing, front and center, right? Boom. Um, yeah, I think that's huge. I think a lot of people want to be interesting versus interested. I know that's a cliche. Right. It's a cliche personal development thing. I'm kind of corny, but it's, 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 like, <laughs> it's true though. It's it true. Is, though. It is. But I mean, a lot of people say it, but it is true. And I, what I love about you is you're very all preaching the intangibles. And I think a lot of ambitious vets, they think they've already developed enough intangibles, but they want the tangible as soon as they get out. And I just love right. what you're doing with your mission with Savvy that's going back to, okay, what are your values? What is why, what are your motives? What is your next mission? And then aligning a roadmap around that. And I think that's why me and you um, are going to be partners for a very long time. We're going to help a shit ton of veterans, like really excel in their mission. I just, I just freaking love that I met you. You're just an amazing person. Um, well, thank you, man. Likewise, it really is incredible to be connected to individuals like yourself that are having this impact and sharing this knowledge because that's what it's about. You know, we got to put this stuff out there so that we can help each other grow. And this is everybody's process. Believe me, there is no kind of ideal scenario or anything. We've all gone through struggles and hardships, but that's a part of the journey. And really knowing how to appreciate that journey, enjoy the journey because you will go through it. And it's absolutely what will help you lead to success. But there is no success without failure. And so you have to embrace the process. You know, there is no such thing as an overnight success. And if there is, it's normally fleeting. It doesn't last. So when you're going through grit, you're going through challenges, and you just feel like you want to give up, just know that that next step may be the next step that just takes you to that point of success that you've been waiting for. Mm -hmm. And that's probably how it happens is that you quit right before you get to that point. But it's all a part of the journey because it's preparing you to receive whatever that you are intended to receive. And even after you receive it, guess what? The journey doesn't end. The hardship doesn't end. The struggles still continue, but it's all a part of the process. And you've got to, you got to love it. you got to love the process because it's just building and contributing to you being the best version of yourself, whatever that looks like. That's amazing. Uh, I, I really agree with that in every way, shape, or form. And I feel like if you're not struggling, you're not growing, or you're not trying to expand, you're not going after more. So absolutely. before we find out how to know more about Savvy, and um, then you're going to drop some three golden grenades to just kind of sum this whole up, and then we'll let you go. But uh, before that, we got some engagement. Ben Colloy says, I love that leadership question. How can I help? That's huge. Right. right. Just asking that question, something as small as that, how can I help and leading with value like that can open up so much opportunity. If you're known for value, see a lot of veterans, they get out like you owe me. I can say that. I, I say that a lot inside this tribe. Don't worry. Yeah. Like, you owe me something because I served for you whenever you come from, how can I help you? Because I got a distinct skill set, right? Because we do perform at such a high level as veterans, like then you can start building your value and then all the tangible stuff just kinds of kind of comes as you run the marathon. Um, right. Tammy Moses says great questions. Ben Colloy says golden grenade. People won't remember what you say, but they will remember how you made them feel. That's Boom. Good. Be the rainbow to someone's storm and they will always remember you. Come on now. I like that. Ben Colloy, <laughs> bring a heartfelt. If you're not feeling, you're not transitioning. I love it. Love it. So you're obviously bringing a shit ton of golden grenades, Adrian. So I want to kind of ask you, like, where can um, Ambitious Vets go to learn more about Savvy and kind of what you guys are doing and kind of follow you guys a little bit closer? Um, so that's real easy. You can go to our website, which is Savvy Vets, and that's S-A-V-I, Vets, V-E-T-S, dot org. Um, you can find us on social media. Our handles are all Savvy Vets on Instagram, Facebook, um, we're on LinkedIn. Um, definitely through any of those typical channels, or you can always give us a call, 844-400-7284. Um, it's definitely our phone number. And so we're active um, through all of these different channels. We have a lot of uh, different community connections and partnerships, and we're always looking for ways to collaborate. And certainly when it comes to getting involved, you know, bring us your skills, bring us your talent. Like I said, it's not always about the monetary compensation. If you can definitely contribute something to the organization, 
And we also collectively support many other veteran nonprofits. So again, it's not just about savvy as an organization. It's about the collective mission for our veteran community. So mm-hmm. I'm always looking for ways to connect people with projects and opportunities. So, you know, come talk to me. I'm, I'm more than happy to do so. And I welcome um, anybody from your group or any outside referrals. We're, we're always looking for ways to engage with the community. That's awesome. Well, guys, I'm going to put all of her links for everything down in the comments below. So guys, look after for those. Um, Adrian, before we let you go, what are three golden grenades that you would drop in here for any ambitious vet that's getting out of the uniform that wants to create a life that impacts? Oh boy. Um, well, I, I think that we kind of coined that one about, you know, people are not going to remember what you tell them, but they're definitely going to remember how you make them feel. So, you know, it, it may sound cheesy, but treat people like you want to be treated. You know, we don't like being sold to all the time or coming in with these expectations. So don't be that person, you know, really look to be a learner, look to be a listener and engage with individuals that are looking to engage with you. You just never know where that next opportunity is. And the second thing that I would say is really love your journey, love your journey, love your hardships, love the challenges. Believe me when I say it is a part of the process, you know, what you see on social media and websites and YouTube and everything else, that's normally the result of all the hard work and challenges that we had to go through to get there. So it, it nothing comes without that. Again, success only comes as a, as a turnout from these different failures. And it really isn't a failure unless you give up. So mm. love the and then lastly, I will say is do the good work, you know, find a way to give back. Um, it will not only feed your soul, but it will absolutely make you a well-rounded person. And even through just doing good work, people will naturally be attracted to you. Opportunities will naturally be attracted to you because you are out there doing a selfless deed. And again, I, I really am of the belief that our service does not end when the uniform comes off. So find a way to get involved and give back. Mm, that's so awesome. I love the engaging. I got something from the engaging part. Look for the people that are wanting to engage you right now. Right. And, and you don't know where that opportunity will lead you. So that's, that's amazing. I took that for myself. So thank you for blowing my mind. So um, guys, um, here it is. Um, here's another episode of the Ambitious Vet live show. I just want to thank you, Adrian, for joining us live. I know how valuable your time is. And for you know, on the side of a very busy schedule with a travel management company, starting another company, building the relationships and the partnerships that, you know, we only can imagine how many veterans is going to impact. I just want to acknowledge you and thank you for who, what you're doing for our community. Oh, it is my pleasure to, to be of service and, and to do the great work that we're doing. And I certainly couldn't do this alone. So thank all of you. And thank you, especially Chris, for having me on. Um, you know, this is, you guys are what make the, the dream happen here. You know, I, I couldn't do this alone by any sense of me. So I, I certainly appreciate the time and then being a part of what you're doing. So thank you again. Well, there you have it, Ambitious Vets. Episode number 39 of the Ambitious Vet Show with Adrian Phillips, guys. The, one of the key golden grenades that I heard from what she said was a 10-year problem with a 10-minute solution, guys. I really want you guys to really let that one sink in no matter where you're at as far as out of the uniform if you're just getting out still in or 10 years out guys there's a lot of wisdom what she said you guys are going to have to get out there and you know get your nose and your nose bled yeah your your bruises uh, through failure and all that you're gonna have to get beat up by life again so you guys can come back and have weight to your words and pull other people up with the projects and missions that you guys are committed to making a difference with so guys again uh, today's show is brought to you by Audible. Uh, they're offering a free audiobook uh, with a 30-day free trial with a free download, guys. Just go to audio, audibletrial.com forward slash ambitious vet to download um, your guys' next title guide, which what I'm committed to is just narrowing the gap, guys, and executing your next mission in your life. Just go to audibletrial.com forward slash ambitious vet to start for free right now. So guys, again, just please subscribe, rate, review the podcast. The feedback is what allows anything in your life, my life, for us to improve together, guys. So meet me in the middle and allow us here at the Ambitious Vet to get better for you. Go and subscribe, rate, and review the podcast. Lastly, guys, I already know that you warrior made to be but to become passion-driven, guys, utilize this one golden grenade you heard today on the show 
And uh, guys, I don't know how long it's going to take, but I promise you, if you take consistent actions with what you hear, right, or see and learn, you will be living that meaningful life out of the uniform. So guys, let's go get it.